Um, so my research is focused on invasive species in Samoa, where I'm trying to determine whether cyclones impact the distribution uh, of the country. Which queen is that? Okay. <laughs> so invasive species are plants, animals, pathogens, anything terrible that's actually doing harm on the environment. They can be introduced species, they're non-native, um, and this means they're actually spread either on purpose or accidentally. Um, they can spread and reproduce quickly, and they really outcompete native species and become a pest and really a problem in the Pacific. So, yeah, so this is kind of the example of their impacts. They impact the human and natural environment, again, outcompeting native biodiversity, and we believe they're further uh, spread by the impacts of climate change against cyclones, which are um, a threat to the Pacific. Um, and islands, again, are especially vulnerable to invasive species. They have absent functional groups, um, absent competitive traits, and they create fragile ecosystems. So we have a lot of native biodiversity that really are easily outcompeted because they don't have these traits to battle against these invasive species. So this is an example of invasive species in the Pacific. Um, looking at it from a global context, and the map is really terrible, I know, but if you focus on the graph, the red line actually uh, represents invasive species in the context of, uh, in a global context. And if you look at the area per cumulative invasive species, uh, it's the Pacific suffers from the highest number of cumulative invasive species per kilometer. <sighs> so, <laughs> so how do we map these invasive species? Um, we use remote sensing, and these could be determined either through uh, traits such as phenology, so their life form characteristics, whether that's flowering, budding, or even uh, uh, their reaction to rainfall, uh, their structure, so how tall they are, think of your digital elevation models or canopy height models, and even texture. So we're using LIDAR data or even satellite imagery and looking at the texture of these images <laughs> and the, uh, the texture of these plants in particular represents. So islands should be successful living labs in the Pacific when you think of how small they are. So it would be fairly easy conceptually to implement remote sensing as a solution to the management of invasive species. They're resource and cost effective. When you go and do field work in the Pacific, it becomes really expensive because of the travel, but also the cultural uh, norms in the Pacific. You have to pay to enter certain areas to collect data. Um, it's non-invasive, so you're not doing any harm to cultural uh, places that are important. Um, and again, it would help with management prioritiz prioritization. Currently, management is um, done by having a talanoa. Uh, they determine what invasive plants or animal species are doing harm to their local communities or islands. So that's how it's determined. And it'll also strengthen the research and practitioner um, relationship in the Pacific. There's currently a divide of remote sensing being applied for conservation management. So there's really fragmented use of remote sensing for invasive alien species in the Pacific. There's currently only two published known <laughs> applications of remote sensing for invasives in the Pacific that have been used for management. So uh, we wrote a literature review on the challenges, but also the opportunities for remote sensing for invasive species management in the Pacific. <laughs> Again, there's challenges pr present that I've actually mentioned. We have disparate resources across the region, um, and it requires significant alignment across all these um, spaces in the geospatial and conservation. Um, we're looking at policies and frameworks. We're looking at technology and infrastructure. Again, think of internet. It's not as easily accessible across the Pacific, for example. <laughs> think of the human capacity and the, imp uh, the expertise. We're losing a lot of trained Pacific professionals uh, to, I shouldn't say where, but Australia <laughs> and New Zealand. But it's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, and monitoring and evaluation, again, going back to how expensive it is to bring people together from all these different countries to prioritize um, using their local knowledge. Um, this removes the bias and political agendas that some of these people may have. <laughs> and it also builds baseline information. Um, yeah, and to foster research and development, which is currently not done in the Pacific. So please watch out for this paper when it's going to be published. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs>